Hey guys, welcome to Craft School Bloom. My name is Krista, and today we're going to be looking at everything I crocheted in the month of March. While I'm recording this, there is a thunderstorm going on, so if you can hear any uh, thunder or loud rain, that's what that is. I'm going to be going over everything that I made in the month of March, and I will be linking all of those patterns down below, and they're always linked in the order that I mention them in this video. So let's get to it. These are not going to be in the order that I made them. I usually just kind of like toss everything in one of these bins. Sometimes I need to take it back out to take photos of it. So it kind of gets stirred around. Um, but this is everything that I made this month. So first off, I just really want to show these off and they're kind of at the top of the bucket here. These are my tiny chicken pattern. Um, I just made them in Bernat Blanket Extra. I've never made them in this giant yarn before. This is... um. 087. So they turn out pretty giant. This is kind of fun. Um, and I used these sinker eyes. They're like safety eyes that have this glitter that gets painted on. Um, and I will link the account down below of where I buy these eyes because I buy them from a specific girl who paints them. And you should go check those out. Also, if you're looking for Bernat Blanket Extra Yarn, it does not come in yellow, so I actually just double-stranded regular Bernat yarn for the beak and the feet. Um, so that just means as you're crocheting, you're just using two strands at the exact same time and doing the exact same like uh, crochet process, just using two strands at once. So I made those. Up next, this is um, a pattern that I haven't shown anybody yet, and this is the size that my, that's my tiny chicken, the, those giant things I just sh showed you that normally turns out this size. And this is a new modification I'm coming out with that's not released yet, but um, I'm hoping it will be sometime in April. And it's just turning my tiny chicken into a rooster and you add the waddle part to it. <clears throat> so this is the size that they turn out in regular Bernat and then this is Bernat Extra. So you can really see uh, you get quite a different product. I might try sometime to do some version of a rooster in extra, but it doesn't come in very many colors, so um, I'm not sure if I'll do that or not. But I'm really excited to have this rooster pattern come out soon. Up next, I have these two fish, and this is actually a pattern test that I did for someone on Instagram. And I'll have this link down below so you can see it. This is something I'm not sure if it will be out by the time this video is out or not, but um, as soon as it is, I will have it linked down below. And it's going to be a free pattern on Instagram, and it's a no-sew pattern. For once, usually I can say all of my patterns are no-sew, but for once I actually do have some that required some sewing. But this is a no-sew pattern, and the entire point was that you can use up your scraps. It's like a scrap buster rainbow fish. Um, so I, of course, took my scraps and like kind of planned them out so they would make a pattern. But you could also make the tail fins or really any of the fins in scraps as well. And this one is kind of like the lucky one. And it got all of my leftover um, Bernat Blanket Sparkle scraps. So this one really is that, uh, that rainbow fish effect in person. But it's hard to get sparkle to show up on camera. I really like this pattern though. And I think these took me about 45 minutes um, because the, the little coil fin things kind of take a little while. But I have a bunch of scraps laid out to make a bunch more of those and like planned out on um, how I want the scraps to look inside the fish. And I think that I'm going to have a basket full of those for a market and see how those do for me. Up next I have one of my bear pattern and then I just changed colors a few times to make it look like a panda. Um, I don't have like a specific modification written up for this yet but I do plan on doing that and posting it for free over on Instagram and then you'll just need to get the bear pattern or watch the bear video here on YouTube and uh, just change colors when you need to. So if you don't want to wait for the actual modification to come out and you don't have any problem like figuring out the um, the changes to make it look that way, um, that's all I did for this one. But I think his little face turned out super cute. I released um, a bunch of patterns this month. And they're kind of mixed out, mixed in throughout the tote. So I'm just going to show you them as I find them. Um, but you can find them in a pattern pack. So first up, I have this No So Sitting Crab. 
And if you watched my video last month, I put out um, a six pack of sitting animals. And then this month I put out a seven pack of seven more animals. So starting out with the crab, I made this one in Burnett Blanket. And, and then this one is made in the yarn that I reviewed last month and said that I got. I made a bunch of things. I actually used every single color of that yarn. So some of the makes this month were just to test that yarn. It's called Naughty Ball. I'll have it linked down below. Um, it's out of stock right now. She's reordering it, but it won't get here for another little while. Um, but it turns out the same size as like Posh or Parfait Chunky. And then to the crab, I made a um, modification that's free on Instagram um, to turn it into a burger. So I have like a crab burger or a crabby patty or whatever you want to call it. But this is the same as this pattern. I just did color changes. And I liked making the lettuce go on top because this claw sticks out a little farther and it reminded me more of lettuce. Um, but I think that turned out really cute. Another pattern in the sitting animals was this cow pattern. And if you look at it on my website, you're going to see this black and white version, just like a classic cow. But then I made it in an off-white with browns, and I always joke that, like, so this is where chocolate milk comes from, because you have to make a chocolate cow. So then I had to make a strawberry cow for where strawberry milk comes from. And this one is a little bit different. Same thing, it's just, like, I made extra modifications. So the actual pattern is just this black and white cow, and all I changed over here to make these strawberries was I just, like, slip stitched some green around them and then did white like a skinnier white yarn for the seeds on top but otherwise it's the same same pattern i just added the detail and changed the different colors and then there's another pattern for a highland cow i think this might be one of my favorite patterns in this pack um i just love the curly hair and i had testers make this and some of them used um like go for faux yarn and so this looks like super super furry um i think i want to make one in regular burnett and then use burnett velvet plus because that's what i have on hand and see what that looks like and this comes in a pattern pack um that's just the two cows as well or you can get all the sitting animals together here's the next sitting animal and this is a dog that you can make with or without the collar and the um the tag and this isn't like a pattern pack per se, it's just one pattern and then you can, like they're both together and you can choose whether or not you want to put this on or not. And there's the back of them. And for most of these, you don't have to make a magic ring if that's something that you don't enjoy doing. Um, for the dog, you don't have to make a magic ring. For the cows, you have to because of the, um, the ears but like the crab doesn't need a magic ring. Up next, I have the sitting bunny. And I only made one of these, but it has this cute little cotton tail. And this is in this month's pattern pack. Um, I saw this made by my testers in a bunch of different colors also in like Burnout Blanket Sparkle. Um, it turns out super cute in a bunch of different shades. And you can make his ears kind of sit down or stick straight up. And I kind of like them more when they stand up. I think that's cute. The next sitting animal pattern I have in that pack is this turtle. Now the one on top, if I can hold it here, let's see. The one on top is a little bit different than the one on bottom. And the one on bottom is what the final pattern looks like. Um, the heads are kind of at like a different height. And the darker green is the final product and you see a little more of the body where with this one it was like just the feet were sticking out and the shell was covering everything up um, but I've got some different face options there as well. I have a son who really loves turtles so I had to finally come up with my own sitting turtle pattern and these are all kind of based off the same shape. I'm not sure how well you can tell that on camera but the body of like the turtle shell and the body of like the dog here are the same basic shape and then we're just adding different things to get different looks out of them and then i think this is my last one to show you guys out of this pattern pack and this one was my daughter's idea but this is the sitting bee of course um if it's just sitting flat it's a little bit like it can almost hide his wings um, but when you're looking at it in person you can see them really well and then this is one where like you would need to know how to do a magic ring for just the the wings but the body doesn't use any magic rings 
All right, up next, let's look at another pattern test that I did this month. And this will all be linked down below. And this was put out by Willow Lee Stitches. This was a four pack pattern pack for a bunch of Wizard of Oz characters and they're called Oz Pals. And so I was chosen to test the lion and then also Ruby is her name in the pattern. In the pattern, you'll find that she has like a blue dress and um, red shoes. Like she looks more like your classic Dorothy um, <clears throat> from the movie. But I am a diehard Wizard of Oz fan. That's like my all time favorite movie of my whole life. And so I had to make the sepia version um, from the beginning of the movie, but I followed the pattern exactly. I just changed the colors is all. But I wanted um, to try one that looked like that. Um, and these are super cute and you don't stuff the bodies. So they're kind of like good for little hands. I made mine with safety eyes though. So if you do that, I would use yarn eyes. And then I had a lot of fun in this tester group with all the other crocheters. We were taking the Dorothy pattern, the Ruby pattern, and turning it into other characters. And so I turned mine into the Wicked Witch of the West. I will eventually have this written up on Instagram. The only thing that will be on my post though is it will say like, go buy her pattern. And then I'll just tell you which rounds I changed color and where I changed color. Um, and she has a dress too here. I know it's hard to see in the black. Um, and then in that four pack, there's also, so there's Ruby, the Lion, the Tin Man, and the Scarecrow. And I took the Tin Man's hat and added it on here in black and did a little bit to it and changed the hair a little bit. I know it's really hard to see, but um, I think this is probably my favorite, uh, my favorite make out of that. And we were all brainstorming different ideas and my kids have been coming up with different ideas on... Um, on just like all different kinds of characters that you could make from this pattern. I think you could make a lot of the princesses from this pattern and like different, um, different book characters and things like that. So I highly recommend this pattern. The only, um, sewing that you need to do is to sew on the hair and the arms. That's all you would need to sew for Ruby. But then like for the lion, this is all surface crocheted on and you just need to sew the arms on. Um, so it's really not a ton of sewing. And I love how this lion hair turned out. I want to write a pattern that uses some kind of something fun with this hair. I think that this is a really cool technique. Up next, I have another turtle pattern that was actually a pattern test. This is more pattern tests than I've done in a long time. Um, but this, you do have to sew the head onto the body. The body is no sew, and then you just sew this guy on. But this pattern is by Tess Loves Yarn, and you can find her here on YouTube or Instagram. And I highly recommend this. This is going to sell super well at my markets and it was super easy to make. Um, I made this in Burnett Blanket and then this was in the Naughty Ball yarn that I was testing. But they have these cute little faces. Would it be a complete month if I didn't make a bunch of leggy frogs? All of these leggy frogs I actually didn't make this month. I made them in the past, but they were sitting in my unfinished projects and I got them completed this month. So I'm counting them. And I think I actually found all of them. So I made four of these like green and pink grumpy ones. And then I made another of the light green happy one. And this pattern is by Not Jaded Co. I usually end up making so many leggy frogs because when we're open for a market, we average selling one per hour that we're open. Like if it's a five hour market, we usually end up selling five by the end of the day. Um, so I, I don't even know how many I have in my stash at this point. I, I might have 20 or 30 um, built up ready to go for market season when it starts. I also always have Katie Bean Creative Octos and you can find her on Instagram or here on YouTube as well. And this top one, I think I was just trying to use up a yarn but these bottom two were just two new yarns that I got and it's one of my favorite patterns to just go ahead and make an octo super fast and see what is that variegated yarn going to look like. Um, I think it's really cool that this actually turned out perfectly so all of the um, tentacles have the same like pattern like the are the colors the colors kind of like flow through the tentacles at the exact same pace so I think it's fun when my stitches line up like that. So I have three of those 
that I know of. Nope. <laughs> I have five of them. There might even be more in there. I have no idea. So same thing here. I was just testing out a new yarn that my kids picked out at the store just to see what the color variations would look like. And these sell really well for me too. In any color scheme, that's why I really love this pattern. I can just pick any yarn or even a yarn that you thought was cute at the store and then you get it home and six months later you're not sure why you have that yarn. I can make an octo with it and they'll still sell. I have two of my Triceratops pattern in this same yarn and this is kind of one of those yarns that seemed really cute at the store and now I just kind of wasn't sure what to make with it. So I was just making random stuff that I could use this one up and then not have that skein of yarn on my shelf anymore and kind of use through my stash. I found another Octo. <laughs> this must have been me just making them or using up another skein of yarn because I've had this uh, Bernat tie-dye-ish and I know what it looks like and I really love this yarn. So I think that turned out pretty cute too. Are you guys ready for yet another pattern that I designed this month and haven't told anybody about? but you guys get to see them here on these videos. I made this dinosaur pattern. Now this pink one I made first and I didn't love everything about it, so I changed the things I disliked on this green one. And this is going to be its own pattern, but I changed the chicken body into a dino. You can kind of see that same silhouette there. I'm really excited about this. Um, <clears throat> and I have a few more ideas um, of things I need to test before this comes out because I'm thinking I'm going to also do a few other animals that you might see next month. This one, the, um, the spikes along the back, if I, the way I did them, they just, they made this like ruffle and I didn't love how that turned out. So I changed the pattern up and I got that fixed. Um, not every pattern turns out exactly how you want it the first time you make it. So I, I always show these like weird patterns that I'll never do it again that way. Um, just to show you guys, like if you're trying to write patterns and you think that first one is just terrible and there's something you don't like about it, that happens to absolutely everyone. Like even after you've been designing for a while, it still happens. So keep going, save the one that you don't like as much and then fix it a little bit and just keep seeing um, you know, what you can tweak and what you can change. And if you have kids anywhere nearby you to ask them <laughs> what they think, they're usually pretty honest. And so I asked my kids, like, I don't really like this. What do you think about it? And they all went, oh yeah, I hate that. You have to change that. <laughs> so they can be really helpful for me actually. And I really love how this one turned out and I like his smile better too. Up next, I have this gecko pattern. I made a ton of these last month as well, and I'm trying to hold them all, but I'm kind of failing here. I can see yarn fuzzies like all over, which I'm gonna bet if you're watching this video, you're, you totally get what I mean. So this pattern is no sew. It takes me about 45 minutes to make these, and I can just kind of make them on repeat, obviously. I have way more in here that I'll show you guys, but there's four in these color schemes. I have this sort of camo one. Turned out really cute. This is Bernat Blanket Sparkle, and I think you can finally see some of that glitter in there. So this one looks really cool in person. I've got two in this variegated option, and this one kind of turned out more blue on top, and this one's kind of purple on the bottom, and then sort of the opposite. So I think they look like they're, they're friends or something. And then this is like my favorite yarn ever. This is Water Slide Variegated Bernat Blanket Brights. And um, I just like this one works perfectly for me and my tension. Um, so of course I had to try one of these and the tail looks striped, which I think is cool. And then this is Bernat Baby Blanket Frosting. And I don't remember the color name on this one, but it's the like blues and greens that you can see there. See, it's so cute. And then the last pattern I have to show you guys is another thing I wrote. It's not released yet. Um, I made those giant tiny chickens. I know they're called tiny chickens, but I made these and um, I only got two of them finished, but I have two more started and I made them all in the same day and ended up with this like shoulder neck ache that turned into a headache and it has been going for about eight days now, um, off and on and bothering me. And I went to the chiropractor that helped a lot. Um, and so I started to crochet last night and I think I brought it all back. Um, so 
I'm a little behind on getting this next pattern out because I've been dealing with that. Um, but that's just something that happens for me if I use Burnout Blanket Extra too much. So I'm just trying to use through my stash and um, probably not buy it anymore because it's just difficult for me to use. Um, that's a me thing though, that's not really the yarn. However, I made this and saw this and thought it was adorable and so I kept crocheting all day and kind of forgot that I have to pace myself when using it because if I don't, um, I don't necessarily feel all the pain right away as I'm crocheting. Sometimes it's like the next day I wake up and I just feel awful from the tension that I have to use with that giant yarn and the hook size change and all that stuff. So the next thing I have, the last thing I have, I have a bunch of these, is this no sew tree frog pattern. And so here there's actually four sizes. Here's the extra large, the large, the medium, and the small. And these are great for scrap busting. And so that's why I wrote the four different sizes. I've been working really hard to weigh out the different yarns so that you could take Bernat, Bernat blanket scraps, weigh them out on like a small food scale and um, see, well, okay, I only have this much. Um, I think it's like 0.7 ounces. Okay, well then I can only make a small with that scrap. Or if I have an ounce and a half, I want to say, or maybe a little less, um, all of these things will be written down uh, specifically in the patterns you'll be able to say, okay, I could make the, the extra large size frog. And then you can just really get through your scraps and make a bunch of different size things. I think that this um, small is, it's like the size of my palm. And I think that's gonna be perfect for a keychain, like backpack buddy type thing. Um, I think that's the only one that I will put on a keychain though. The rest of them will just be small plushies. I made them in this orange because this is Bernat Blanket Brights, and it's the thickest, heaviest Bernat that I have um, without going up to like Bernat Blanket Extra, but just regular weight six um, Bernat because that way you could weigh a scrap of like frosting or something or baby blanket that might be thinner and know that this pattern is going to work for you. So I'm hoping to get that to the testers um, maybe next week if my, my crochet pain goes down and have them weighing out their scraps and testing out these patterns. But I'm really excited about that one. I really love this. So that's why um, I, I got sidetracked by how cute these are. That is why they're all orange because that was the color I had in the thickest um, yarn to be able to make that happen. But of course I just made a whole bunch of them. That's a Burnett Sparkle. This is Big Twist Plush. So that one's really thick. And then we were having fun, my kids and I, and this one's got a little smile. I actually prefer them without it. I think they're pretty cute, but I made a few with them because my kids asked me to. Um, we were testing out all the different patterned yarns. And here's a purple one and a pink one. And some of these are, I think these might all be the medium size. So the plain old green one, if you want to see like a classic color and some tie-dye-ish, and this one is, um, he kind of looks like a crab to me. <laughs> and I just realized I accidentally gave his little foot like one extra, extra little toe hanging off there. He's supposed to have three. Um, so he has like one slightly bigger hand. And then I've got like a, another shade of green and a pink. I have one here that is um, Burnett Blanket Tomato Sparkle is the name of this color. I remember that one. So that one is glittery and the reason I have a bow tied on top is because I accidentally did the opposite and he only has two little toes on one hand instead of three. And so I want to remember at my market to just go ahead and tag it for like half off or something. And then if somebody picks it up, to just let them know right away that that's why it's on there. So if they don't want to buy that one, that's okay. But if they don't mind, then it's there. And I thought I was done, but I forgot that I have a whole little basket of other fun stuff. So I was telling you about the Naughty Ball yarn earlier in this video, and I talked all about it last month. So go check out last month's video if you want to see a whole, whole review of what I bought. But I was testing every single color. Um, I bought every single color, and I wanted to make sure that I tested every single color at least once. So I made a bunch of this tree frog 
um, pattern, and those will definitely be going on keychains for markets. And the Katie Bean Creative Octo, of course, in blue. I love this super bright color. Um, I made this sea turtle. This is a Noso sea turtle. It takes me about an hour to make, and this is by the Friendly Fox. I want to say is the right name, um, but all the sea turtles I've made in the past, they were all this pattern. I love this pattern. I love that this yarn has a red and so I can make normal colored chickens because I really loved Joanne Big Twist Posh, but they didn't have a red. Here are a couple more of the gecko pattern in an orange and like a tan and a leggy frog, of course. And this is my sitting frog pattern that came out last month. And then I haven't released this yet either. I feel like I'm just constantly telling you guys about things that aren't out yet. But I have a bunch of um, like small sized or miniature sized sitting animals that I would like to come out with soon. And then the last thing, this is a free pattern over on Instagram by my friend Lauren at Pumpkin Patch Crochet. And this is a no sew snail. And I had never made a snail before, so I thought this was super fun. And guys, that is everything for this month. Make sure that you subscribe so that you can see everything that I've got going on in the next few months and when new patterns come out. I also have a lot of no sew tutorials for free here on my channel. Leave a comment down below and let me know which pattern you're most excited to try for yourself, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!